That's all the show is going to be is just basketball references. Oh, God. <laughs> Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z. And I'm Ian with Full Throttle Battery. And we are back in the studio once again. Uh, we were without Ian uh, the last episode. I was down in southern Idaho with uh, the Sector 7 guys, Lynn Hodges and, and crew. Uh, shout out to Sheldon and uh, Danny down there doing a good job. And I sent you down there to get me a, a new mirror lens for mine. And I brought uh, you a present. I know. I know. I appreciate that. <laughs> and then you slapped me in the face and said you had a second broken mirror. <laughs> <laughs> If I have it, assume it's broken. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we had a good time down filming with those boys, helping them get kind of the ball rolling on some new content for their products and kind of getting their video situation uh, set up down there. They have a new room to, to create content. So hopefully lots of content from the, those guys in the future. Nice. Hey, uh, I know a dude who also runs Sector 7 Mirrors. I do too. Yeah. Yeah. We have a special guest with us today. Big Cajone Johansson, <laughs> Al Macbeth joins us over the phone from the great North White Can- Canadia. That's that's not his official nickname, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> uh, uh, Al, how are you doing? Good, man. Good. Hey, I can, I can only hear you though. I can't hear Ian. Oh. You... How about now? How about now? Yep. I can hear Ian, Ian now. I was going to say not hearing me is probably a blessing. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so, how are you doing up there in the uh, the north side of the of the world? It's a little bit um, a little bit white, a little powdery. Yeah, man, all things are good. Um, we have had kind of a weird snow year. It's been super mild at the beginning of the year, so all the lakes and all that kind of stuff didn't freeze till later. But uh, we're in full uh, we're in full storm now, and uh, it was just I think it was, what, it was minus seventeen the other day or something. So. We're definitely, it's definitely winter now. I saw you post it up. You were ripping the pro on a frozen lake. You know, that, that must've sucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, it was rad. Um, that car is so much fun to drive. And, uh, we, we went out to a place called Tulamine Otter Lake and we're going to go do some, uh, we, I, actually I was heading out to go do some, uh, donuts, some tornadoes. Cause the, uh, the side by side blog guys were were kind of wanting to uh, do a little back and forth on that, I think. But that we had due to kind of the weird conditions, it just wasn't what I wanted to do. wasn't quite possible. So um, back to uh, back to another lake, I think, in a, in a week or two here. Nice. Now you uh, you're a multi sport athlete up there in the in the north. You you've been ripping down on two wheels. I guess it's not even wheels. Uh, yeah yeah the snow bikes i've been i've been loving it man um game changer for me for sure uh i was a i was a sledder for years and um i love sledding but uh just something about sledding these days it just irritates my back and it's i don't know what it is it's the only sport that i do that aggravates my back and so um you know, we, we, I love the track car, uh, taking the razors out in the snow is always a, a super good time too. But, um, so the snow bike thing came along and I tried one and I'm just so pumped on them. Uh, I got, I got a, a timber sled uh, kit on a Husky and, um, we're, we're going to places, man, that I could never even have dreamed of going to on my snowmobile. So did you go, um, did yeah, you go with a 450 or a 501? I went with a 450 just cause that was what I was told to go with, honestly. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I mean, 501, I don't know if the 501, I'm not sure what the power specs are on that. I don't know if it's more power or not. Um, but you know, to make these things, to make these things the next level, you know, they need about, I would say they need about 30, 30 more horse, you know, that's going to kind of start changing the game up with them for, you know, turn it into a, from a billy goat, so to say to a, uh, you know, to more of a snowmobile billy goat. So what you're saying is uh, there's a little bit of a trade-off. You don't get to go as fast, but you get to go everywhere on a bike. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you don't have the you don't have that horsepower, so you don't have the just you know out of the box wheelies, all that crazy stuff. But um, I mainly tree ride anyway, uh, just because uh, we're we're not the guys that are up in the mountain first by any means, and so to get the fresh pow all day long, we usually just tree ride and um tree riding is a lot of work but on the bike 
we're getting ourselves into way more trouble. It's just, it's just rad. That's awesome. <laughs> so your, uh, your build out on that, you said you're running the Husky, um, and then you're running a, a timber sled chassis, correct? Yeah, you bet. T- uh, timber sled, one twenty nine three inch paddle kit. Running the threes. And, and so, you know, as far as getting around versus a sled, what, kind of what are the differences on that? Um, it's not as much work. <laughs> <laughs> I know running the snowmobiles, you really have to kind of lean into them and and get them over on their side to get them to cut corners and whatnot. So on the sled, on the timber sled, you're probably more like a bike where you just kind of point it and go. You literally just point it and go, man. It's crazy. I was down in a, I was down in a, uh, a section this weekend that we've, we sometimes journeyed down there with sleds. It's just a gnarly tree side of a mountain. And, um, I've been down there and, you know, getting out of it was like, that was all day. That was a full day's work of, of being stuck snowmobile on the sled and, and, you know, digging and getting back on and hitting a tree and all that. We went, we played in that area for probably two hours, just shredded on the bikes and then just took off and went to the next area. I didn't even break a sweat. Wow. So, um, yeah, a, a lot different. And I mean, I'm, I'm kind of bored and bred on bikes. That was, you know, where I've, where I've come from. So the bike is really second nature to me. So yeah, man, I, I'm loving every minute of it. The nice thing about those, uh, those snow bikes is that with a sled, you have two skis out in front of you and depending on what the snow and the rock or the whatever underneath you bumps you, you know, you could be snagging all day long on trees and limbs and things like that on a bike. You kind of, if you're not going to hit it, the bike's not going to hit it. So yeah, the uh, exactly for the side snags. That would be the that would be the negative though over the bikes. Um, is if there's actually not snow on the ground on a sled, you can kind of you can get through some rocks. You can get through some uh, some you know low snow coverage areas on a sled. Uh, the bikes they do just not, throw you right not off. like snow. <laughs> yeah, I've been over the bars a few times, just hitting underlying rocks, and it seems like the uh, the carbides on the bottom of the ski seem to have magnets on them almost, and they just <laughs> they just grab, and that, that's the end of that, man. So yeah, that, that's the only negative I've found so far. Did you do any uh, when you were on two wheels? Did you do any single track riding? Um, yep, did lots. Just like, more across the single track, everything. Now, what do you think uh, in terms of like w- from a discipline standpoint? Does single track have anything to, in common to, with uh, snow bike? I've never been on a snow bike, but a single track something fierce. More or less, I'm kind of asking. Uh, Can from he a car- do it <laughs> from a cardio standpoint? Because single track is cardio hell. It, it yeah, no, the, the snow bike's not man. Um, wow, I'm I'm and it almost like I. <laughs> It's funny because we, we got on these things to take it a little easier, so to say. And then now we just find ourselves pushing now as absolute far as we can go and, and trying to get that, you know, that, that, uh, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, not just the cardio, but you know, it, it feels weird when you're not breaking a sweat, I, wow. I guess is what, is what I'm trying to say. So There's you know, a level we're, of we're, adrenaline we're going, that makes you feel good when you get into a rhythm. Exactly. And, and, and so we're now we're going to these just bizarre places that now we are breaking a sweat, whether it's from adrenaline or, or from work. <laughs> now, when you guys but, are uh, out riding on these things, are you, are you sending them off of the, the little cliffs and stuff like that? Like you see all these the professional snowmobilers in the back country are doing, they're, they're doing like hundred foot drops and all that. Is that something that you guys have been entertaining or is it, is it more about just uh, cruising and, and taking it all in? Um, you know what, me 10 years ago, absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I'd be, I'd be sending them just like I sent my snowmobile. Um, but, uh, now that's not what I'm really looking for out of a bike. Uh, they have the potential to do it. Absolutely. But, um, I've got a, I've got a side by side to send it with now. And that's, that's you, you prefer the hard I'm landing kinda... of dirt versus the soft pillowy cushion of a, a side mountain. Um, I don't know about <laughs> that. I just, it's just, I don't know, man, you gotta, you gotta pick and choose your battles. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go wreck myself on a snow bike doing some big air because my <laughs> problem is, my problem is I can't do just a little jump. It's not like it, it just does nothing for me anymore. So right. um, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it big, and it's not worth me wrecking myself on a snow bike. Um, you know, doing something like that, whereas I could just be on my comfortable on my UTV and and you know do what I'm supposed to be doing. So now speaking of, of doing that, um, last time we saw you was in, uh, Utah at the UTV takeover event in San Hollow hurricane area. 
um, you know, that was a pretty awesome first year event. I thought that went off really well. What were your thoughts on, uh, on the event down in Utah? Was I at that event? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but some oh, guy yeah, was out there oh, throwing oh, machines yeah, in the air. <laughs> yeah, man. No, that was that, that, that was my first time to Utah, and that, it was that was Al Stud, man. A, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, he doesn't actually jump; he has a stunt double that just flies around the country for him. Right. You know what? That's not a bad idea. Like, <laughs> you, can, you can you can almost run that as you get older, eh? <laughs> no, no one can see past the visor, anyways. Yeah, yeah, it's always <laughs> it's an advisor. Keep them about the same weight. Yeah, man, awesome event. Um, first time to Utah, as I said. Uh, I, I loved the whole area, the, the the people, the the place, just how much variation in riding was there. Um, can't wait to go back. Honestly, it, it's definitely my it was my my highlight of the 2020 year. I think the trippiest thing about that place is you and I were having a conversation like that was, you know, I don't do a lot of rock crawling. I went out there and obviously there's just loads of places you can go out there and do rock crawling. And then you and I had a conversation. It was like, we're seeing the same things. Like we wanted to go out there, kind of experience the whole thing. So you want to air down a little bit and tackle some of those obstacles, but then you find yourself just going way, way too fast to air down. <laughs> like, uh, I yeah. think I was at like 15 to 18 PSI out there because we were hauling so much, butt. I was like, I'm going to have a problem if I'm running like seven. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Those sneaky, uh, those sneaky rocks under the, under the sand at, at times of the day you'd be coming out into the back there and I was I was taking a few people for rips and uh and um uh, you just see it at the last minute you just kind of pucker it a little bit and be like oh man we're gonna ground out that's gonna tag the frame and oh, yeah. luckily I I did the same thing I didn't I didn't have my tires low at all and uh and uh we had the 32s on there and, and the and the long travel kit combined kept our our ground clearance kind of where it needed to be and uh um it was good man it, it was yeah what, what an awesome place yeah, that place easily went into my top three or four riding destinations. It's awesome. Yeah, and, and what you were talking about too, I, I think it was you talking about, was the the potential to get to the Grand Canyon from there. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a That's, there's a system uh, that goes all the way south, and then you can takes roughly a day to get there, and you could probably make it back the next day. We're gonna attempt it like, next year. You want to roll? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. If we could make it work, so that like I'd get there a week early, if we could go and try something like that, cool. you know. Cause you know, it'll take us half a day to get there and then another week to get me and my broken shit back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, I mean, the trail system out there is uh, supp supposedly pretty epic. And, and I think that speaking to that, the variety of terrain out there, you know, somebody could really go and have a full week's experience out in the middle of nowhere and do something new every day. Totally. So, man. uh, and just the, the views, like the views are just epic. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't think you can turn around pretty stunning. 15, 20 degrees without seeing something more epic than what you just saw. So, yeah. <laughs> and this, I didn't expect it, but the sand out there is, it's so much fun. Oh my gosh. Man, the sand it's is kind a of blast. like a glassy sand. It's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty it's interesting. It's crazy. It's crazy fine. Yeah. And, and yeah, like when we were digging into it, it was wild because the top is just this fluff. And then you get to the bottom and it's almost like dirt. Like it almost has the same like package is, is, a, is a hard dirt you'd find on a motocross track. It's just wild. So, uh, getting towards the end of the event, uh, there was this little thing called Huck Fest out there and, uh, you had been riding all week in your, uh, your pro Were you racing, were you driving around in your race pro or was that your, your four seater you were running around in? Um, I was doing all of it. Uh, I, I did, uh, I was taking people for rips in the pro. Um, uh, we raced the pro and then I also have the, my four seater turbo S on 35. So I, I, I love that thing too. So I just, I'm just kind of jumping back and forth to vehicle so, to vehicle, depending on what we were doing. So a lot of people ask us, you know, would you buy a turbo S like four seater or would you buy a pro four, right? Like what kind of, what kind of, what's your perspective coming? I mean, you're on a, you're the needs that you need out of a vehicle are completely different than the rest of us. But, uh, what's your perspective on the difference between a turbo S and a pro, uh, XP pro, um, to a buyer out there? We get this question probably two, three times a day. Um, what people should be looking at because they're both amazing cars. They both operate yeah. um, on a, on a near performance level. They have a little bit strengths and weaknesses, differences. Um, but what what's kind of your perspective on the two? 
and, and I've been getting asked the same question for the last six months, and I think I've got it figured out how to properly say it. So, so here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, the 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 pro is a better. The pro has more potential. Um, you have more power potential with the pro. You have better uh, geometry with the pro. Um, you have. What, what a lot of my customers like is the, the cab, in-cab seating positioning. You can fit a bigger guy in the pro. Um, your feet aren't you know, going to hit the dash even on, a, on a, like a six foot seven plus dude. Um, comforts on the pro are definitely nice. Um, the one thing the pro doesn't come with is the long travel kit. Um, so all in all, the ultimate car out there today, in my opinion, is a pro with a long travel kit on it. And, you know, HCR long travel kit definitely doesn't hurt. Um, but uh, if, if a guy's looking for all in all, if you're in the rocks, if you're crawling around, if you're mud bogging, if you're in a, uh, a situation where you need more ground clearance, um, then at that point, that's when the Turbo S kicks in because, you know, you're 16, 16, five out of the box ground clearance, 32s out of the box, uh, a machine that's, Maybe a little, I would say, less built for race, but built for business. And that's one reason why I really like the Turbo S personally, is just that kind of all-in-one package straight from the dealership um, to do the stuff I like to do, right? And that's that's the key thing with people making a purchasing decision, is they need to understand kind of the entire package of what they're investing in and if they should be buying uh, to upgrade or if they're buying to to not upgrade for a while and what's going to be the more complete package for them, right? So, um, you know, when we're talking apples to apples, if we're saying a Turbo S with a, a long travel kit and a Pro with a long travel kit, you know, I think the obvious choice is to go with a Pro. If you're not looking to yep. drop another 10 grand into your car and you're looking to have a car that lasts you for the next year or two without you investing in it, you know, the Turbo S is a, is a pretty complete package um, and its looks don't hurt either. So um, the the Pro is the future, right? That's kind of what Polaris has kind of put out there is like, this is our next 10 years. We need to look at, at building on this platform. So if you're in, into it for the long haul, uh, it doesn't make sense to go on a, on a, a platform that's going to get phased out at some point. Um, and so the Pro, with its solid uh, one-piece chassis, with its better geometry, with its better cabin comforts, and all that is a, is a much better choice uh, if you're going to plan on putting more money into it over the long haul, right? And uh, yeah. you know the, in, the future only is, is bigger and better for everything, right? Over the time, there'll be newer uh, systems suspension options, there'll be newer power options, whatever comes down the pipe, right, from Polaris. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's really interesting to see that conversation happen pretty much hourly for us. <laughs> People asking Turbo S or Pro, um, they're priced competitively, they're they're kind of in the same performance house, but, they're, but their geometry and their riding characteristics are a little bit different. For 99.9% <laughs> of the market, though, either one of them are going to be outstanding. You know, I, mm -hmm. there aren't too many riders out there that are gonna, really going to see how drive those cars, which one functions better in what environment. Right. And, and that's, and that's exactly it too. Um, and that's when people ask me, I've got to, I've got to like kind of sometimes back up a bit and, 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 you know, realize that they're not looking for the most extreme thing on the planet. They're just looking to get out. And that's why, you know, you have all the, the extremeness of the pro, uh, but you know, the, the 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 s isn't that far off yeah um a, lo a lot of the times though what i've been seeing lately is customers will come into the shop asking that question and then it'll it'll get down to well hey come out and sit in one you know and um i would say uh, nine times out of ten as soon as they sit in the pro they're sold on the pro it's one of the most comfortable riding positions I've noticed on the, on vehicles. Uh, the first experience I had a, with a pro was uh, the two seater that you built for uh, Rich Maxi. I uh, I drove that thing and was blown away. I thought it was fantastic, and that and then I want to say about a month to two months later, we got our hands on a four seater for the company. So you know, if we're looking at those two cars, uh, is is it possible to upgrade a Turbo S? Um, to the same handling characteristics of a pro is that possible or is that something that's really that comes down to the chassis geometry and and you're really having to invest in that versus the upgrade it's a good question um i think uh i think geometry wise the and again we're going to start getting into like race talk here versus just a weekend warrior talk you that's know? okay um <laughs> uh, but 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 i think geometry wise at the pros design 
especially of the back end, um, is going to outperform the S's design. Um, and, and that's kind of why I'm, you know, I'm starting to lean towards the, 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 the pro for everything fast, the S for everything that's more like brutal, so to say. Nice. So, uh, getting back to, um, uh, Utah, uh, you were out there doing pretty much everything you could with your time. You went off of a, a fun little cliff drop. That was interesting. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, that was a kind of a cool thing from the video. It doesn't do it justice. I don't think, <clears throat> um, I think that people don't realize that as soon as you hit the landing, you're pointed right at some rocks. Um, it was kind of a sketchy deal there. How, what was your mindset going into that? And I noticed that you did a little, uh, some little pedal wrapping right at the lip there to get that front end up. How did, how did that go? Um, yeah, you know what? The jump, the jump was super sketchy and like <laughs> you gotta, especially in, in my business, you gotta really, um, you gotta weigh the, you gotta weigh the, like the negative versus the positive, right? And, and whether <laughs> something's, something's worth doing, um, that jump totally wasn't worth doing. <laughs> it, it, Especially after it, a dude toppled off of it a week earlier. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I remember I, I saw Parsons do it and, and I've, and I've got, I'm definitely, you'll, you'll never hear, hear me chirp off on social media. And, and, and I heard, I, but I, I was on one of the feeds that showed his jump and, and he, a bunch of people were giving him a hard time and shit. And I was just, I was just like, whatever, like, you know, people just, people can't keep their mouths so shut sometimes, but you never know, especially from a video, you never know how gnarly something can be. And everything was wrong with that jump. The, the angles were off. Um, half of your takeoff was sand, half of your takeoff was rock. Um, it just, every angle was wrong with it on the, on the, the launch. And then you have this landing where, as you said, you're, if you get a little bit off, you're going into a rock. You can't even actually, if the, even if the landing was perfect or sorry, the takeoff was perfect. You couldn't even go far enough down the, the, the jump to do a proper jump because of all the rocks. So it's just, everything's wrong. And then to top it off, it really doesn't even look that good on video. So <laughs> it was just, I got up there, I started, I, I went up there the first day, I checked it out. It was like, yeah, I think we can do it. And then, you know, get back up to the car, stuff starts getting a bit more real. We did a little bit of fine tuning to the takeoff just because, um, because of what it, what it was. And, and we did it and it was sketchy as hell. And I figured, you know what, that was about, I'm going to say I did it, but that's, that's <laughs> it. I don't, I don't need this jump anymore. I can, I can, I, and, and that's the thing on that one too. If you do biff it, you're going for a ride and you're going to wreck your car. Yeah, and right. so it wasn't worth, you know, me wrecking my car before jump fest, uh, you know, for that little dinky ass jump. <laughs> my, my favorite thing about that jump is everybody was talking about it at the event prior to you hitting it. They were talking about what had happened uh, a week or two earlier. And then after you hit it, as much as, as, as difficult and as bad as you said that it was, you made it look so easy that everybody <laughs> and their dog was just going, oh, I totally am going to hit that. I should have hit it. Of course, nobody did. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't stop them from saying that they should have. Well, what, I mean, what got me on that jump too is like you have a, you know, as, as when, uh, when I believe it's Dan Parsons, when, when he went off it, um, you know, being a four seater, I think as well, but you know, there might not have been enough throttle involved, uh, just, you know, outsider looking in, but, um, you obviously have to throttle off these kinds of jumps when you, when you go off them. Well, on that thing, you're ha one wheels on the sand, one wheels on the, uh, on the rock. And so when you're throttling, it, as you saw what happened in Medusa, especially with that much power, it kicks the bloody thing sideways. So it's just the, every aspect about it is a, is a, is a lose situation on that jump. And going off the lip there, and it's not just putting your foot in the pedal, right? It, it's, it's getting up to a speed that's appropriate and then letting off and then getting that front end, getting that suspension on the front end to kind of pop out a little bit so that you're not nose diving and lawn darting halfway down a mountain. Exactly. It's, it, it's about, it's about getting your, getting your turbos spooled up or your engine making in its peak torque curve at the exact time when your front wheels leave the ground so that it can keep them up long enough for your back end to follow. Yeah. So that, that went off. There was, you know, several hundred people up on the ledge watching that. That was a pretty epic, uh, 
ep- epic day out there for everybody. Um, and uh, later on, you were out racing on the short course. That's a lot of fun out there in the sand. How was that? Uh, you were running the pro. Um, and that yep. car, you know, you go out to the races and you see everybody racing. Everybody's kind of like doing the same thing over and over again. And then you see the car come out that just, it seems like there's a rocket booster on the back of it because it just shoots out <laughs> of the hole so fast. That was your car. <laughs> it is. I, I, the, the car is working so well. Um, I'm, I'm pumped. Um, and yeah, that, that race was a lot of fun. I, I love the, I love the takeover races. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's not only is it fun, but they always pick cool tracks and it's just the, the whole, the whole vibe is always great. So racing, uh, on dirt versus in the sand on a sand course, you know, what, for people that don't really understand it, what, what, what are some of the differences going into a short course on sand versus dirt? Um, well, uh, slippery, you got always got to deal with, with, with a bit more slide. Um, you know, you gotta be running the right tires, uh, because speaking of tires, you some... weren't running paddles, you were running your grippers, right? No, no, I was running uh, Sandcraft, uh, oh, Sandcraft, okay. uh, I think I had my talons on it for that one. Gotcha. A- and, um, then as the race goes on, which happens very quickly, you've got these massive ruts to deal with. And yeah, those are um, no joke ruts out there. That's where I was getting a little bit screwed up. Um, I have been playing around with the shocks on that pro, uh, for quite a while. Um, just trying to get the electronic shocks figured out for what I need to do with them. Um, they were not right for that. Um, I was having a lot of lift in the corners and that solely, you know, did, did kind of, uh, play with me a little bit, but, um, all in all, uh, it, I think it went well. <laughs> that's, it, it's such a precise thing. Cause what you're talking about getting lift in corners, that's where my X three is right now. But if you took it to Winchester, there isn't a hit that's going to pop you. Uh, it's just, it's so perfect for Winchester and so crappy for coups. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like, it's so perfect for doing shoots, kill climbs, jumps, drop downs, transitions. But the second you get into, uh, trails left and right, you're just holding on, you know? <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. And I, I'd been, I'd been testing the pro, um, cause I really wanted to, I wanted to get the ride along thing, like going in a big way last year. And we just. I couldn't, I couldn't get the shocks figured out enough to, to, um, uh, make it, what was the word for it? Uh, make it safe for someone to be, uh, coming, yeah. coming beside me, so to say, you know, on, on, on a jump situation. So, um, that with, with working with that, I was honestly, I was setting it up kind of for the wrong terrain to begin with. Um, but Hey, let, live and learn. And, um, as I was saying to Zach earlier, uh, I've got a new uh, a new shock sponsor on this year that's going to help us out with all of that. So um, yeah, big time sponsor. To, to, yeah, so yeah, people don't realize that you typically that. will just take the OEM shock and rebuild them to your needs, right? Revalve them, re respring them, do whatever you need to do to make them uh, compatible with uh, um, the adventures you do, right? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. Um, I definitely like um, we Medusa is all custom shocks. Medusa um, is yeah. Other than that, we've we've tried to uh, make make work with the OEM shocks, you know, for for different scenarios. Uh, the uh, the Turbo S still has OEM uh, dynamic shots on them, and uh, and we got those those are valid mint. That thing works great uh, for the race course. Um, as I said, we got a new sponsor on board, and um, hopefully that'll help us for racing and the ride along aspect of it. So the uh, the new sponsor you're bringing on board uh, that that shock setup. Are you going to be looking at the electronic shocks, or are you going to go full manual this time? Um, no, I'm I'm gonna and I'm definitely not knocking the electronic shocks either. I, I love these electronic shocks. Um, they are they are a game changer for 99 percent of the of of the riding that most people are going to do. Um, but I am I am going to a manual shock. <clears throat> um, just uh, I don't know. It's you have very specific it, it, needs. Can go right down to a fine <laughs> yeah, detail. Uh, I have very specific needs. I don't need to hit a switch in the cars that I'm going to be putting these shocks in. Um, I don't need to hit a switch to change my comfort level. There's only one level, and that's go. that's go time. You know, <laughs> yeah, so for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm 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 just super stoked that um, you know these guys are coming on board, and I'll release all that here very soon. Yeah, I figure if you have time to to look for a switch and to reach up for a switch, you're probably not racing. 
<laughs> yeah, you're, 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 you're not far off or it's a, or it's a different kind of racing. I mean, right. yeah. When, when, when I'm on the pro on a short course, you know, it's just, it's on firm all the time, but the, you know, where, where I, where I would find, and that's the, that was the other thing about the pro is actually the, uh, I, I love the steering wheel on the pro. Um, when you are out and about and you're trying to, you know, fly, fly through the whoops or whatever, and then you do see a big obstacle come off, come up, and you're hitting that X button. Like it actually, it actually Leo's works, button. and that's yeah, yeah, and it it, it actually works. And it, and I'm I'm definitely stoked on that button because on on the S, I've actually crashed before because I was looking for the button on the dash. You know what I, mean? <laughs> like, I, I knew what was coming up, and I probably I probably could have got through it, but I was looking for the button and I didn't pay attention to what I was doing. So you guys uh, raced pretty much a full day out there. You did really well, and and uh, you and Wyatt uh, threw down there at the at the final laps. There, uh, you both were getting squirrely. You were both getting up in the air, and and uh, it was a battle. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, definitely a battle. Wyatt got me in the end. Um, we'll have to. <laughs> we're gonna have to redo that. But um, rematch. Yeah, big time. Uh, but you know what? Uh, great kid couldn't uh, couldn't give it to a better guy. You know what I mean? Like he's uh, he, he's out there. He's working hard. He's kicking ass and taking names. So props to Wyatt and 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 his dad and his whole crew there. Those guys those guys put a lot of effort in it, and it shows. Um, I, I've been I've been kind of taking it easy on the racing scene lately. I've been concentrating more on the jumps and and that kind of stuff, and uh, it, it it shows in my performance. So um, yeah, props to him. I, I got to ask you about that one because uh, following your social media feed, we're starting to see you kind of gravitate to more uh, some stuff like adventure type rides. Like it looks like you're taking that four seat up into the mountains, getting a little muddy, uh, going out into the back country. Uh, is that going to be something you're going to continue doing? Kind of uh, because I did hear a rumor. We uh, your buddy Tim is now our neighbor up here in Northern Idaho and is looking at possibly putting up a shop. He mentioned that maybe uh, you'd be interested in coming down and going to a ride to, from uh, Wallace to Lolo with us. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, the, the, the reason I, I try to, I mean, the reason you've been seeing what you've been seeing on the feeds is because I, I mean, I do, I do all of it. It's just before I wasn't really posting any of it. Um, so I, I really want to, I want to, kind of show the whole range of what we are doing and it's not you know for me it's not just about jumping even though that's that's a you know a large part of what i do um i have just as many weekends out exploring uh and then we got some racing and then you know just yeah really uh mixing it up i guess is the word i'm looking for that's what that's what it's all about right you 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 just you hammer away on one thing for too long and and i mean hell sometimes you even get bored of it it seems like the OEs are kind of going that direction as well. They're kind of pushing, you know, we're seeing we're seeing cars come with uh, factory options for little roof racks. You know, we've seen everything on, uh, you know, seen Polaris do that, seen Can-Am do that. Um, it seems like that the industry is really trying to placate to the people that want to do that. Yes. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. And, and I mean, because the one thing that we can't uh, forget is that, I mean, these side-by-sides, they have so much to offer. Oh right? yeah! Like it's not it, it's it's not just about it's not a it's weekend not warrior racing. It's not just about jumping. You can literally do like you you name it, and they can do it, and they can do it pretty damn good. I mean, hell, we even got tracks on these things now. You know, oh, like yeah. um, the places we're going with the track cars are now like you know five years ago you would have been like you never make it up there on a track car. So. Yeah, <laughs> and you take a look at something like a General or a Ranger, you would think that that'd be a perfect rig for what we do going out and camping off these things, but. Dude, make no doubt about it. I could pack an elk out on my pro, you know, no, no question about it. And, and so why not take that out adventure? Right? <laughs> like I, I want some horsepower. Well, you might get there a little too quick. Yeah. No, that's never a problem. Well, well yeah. And, and you know what, with that being said too, I mean, you got to remember that, um, the, the vehicles that are more, um, you know, work built, so to say, for lack of better terms, you know, they're, they're also, they're not, they're meant, not meant for the speed that, you know, you and me like to travel. And so exactly. I've, tr I've tried to take those, those vehicles out before and we just ended up with failures, my own fault, but I'm used to something that has close to 20 inches of wheel travel. And, and by I'm failures, going you're not step. saying like the machine itself didn't do what it was meant to do. You just pushed it past that point. Yeah, I, I don't exactly. I don't know what it is meant to do because I'm used to doing something else. So when I see a washout ditch, I pin it. Absolutely. Like how, I kind of want to do that now. Ditch. I want to throw a Ranger at full speed into a, a G out and see what happens. <laughs> 
you know, because I'm so spoiled from from the S and the Pro of just all all the travel and how they handle. Whereas you get into a machine that wasn't built for that, and you pin it at a washout ditch, and not only are you going end over end, you're tearing the whole car apart. So you're gonna um, have a bad yeah. time. <laughs> I, uh, I'll, I'll take the race cars for as much as I can possibly take them on. <laughs> so, uh, going back to the, how the season wrapped up, you, uh, you threw down at, uh, at Huckfest. You went for, you went for gold on that jump. I think definitely went for gold. Um, <laughs> Don't know if we quite got gold yet. Well, you were digging for like, it. I mean, <laughs> more, more like uh, that pinkish tinge of the sand out there, maybe is what we got. But yeah, no, it was it was all good. We we did have we had a little issue uh, with, with with the takeoff. It I kind of knew it. I figured the car would be able to handle it. It didn't. Um, it is what it is. I, I've got no regrets. Um, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't really sustain anything major injury wise. Uh, the car took it like a champ. It was, a, I think it was a good testament of products too, you know, that we run. And um, I think you just walked away with like a sore cool ankle video. from that, right? Yeah. I, I messed my foot up. I, the bottom of my foot was the biggest, was literally my biggest injury. And, and what's hilarious is that I, I, the injury that's been plaguing me still to this day from that event isn't from the crash. It's from hitting a rock in the rally course, <laughs> uh, the rally course race, and uh, breaking a bone on the top of my hand. Oh wow! <laughs> Dang. And that and that was that's what's still to this day hurting me. I got I got no pain from the from any crash. So um, yeah, that tells you <laughs> tells you how we fared on that one. So uh, when you went when you took off, because I mean you guys spent a lot of time on the takeoff and all that. I mean you, you do every time, right? You want to make it as perfect as possible. Was it just the uh, the approach was too fast, or the compression on the shocks just didn't have time to let go, or? No, we just we we didn't we didn't quite have the curl proper, and it's and it's, it's none of none of like any of the anyone's fault. I'm definitely not shifting blame or anything like that um it's just it's a really hard thing to do with the my and it's hard like, to do I with sand a, exactly and, and i have ramps built at home and they're all mint and we've you know we, we've spent a lot of time building these ramps so that they're perfect and that they you know they they, they launch it right well the whole program for you do the youtube takeover events was to try to mimic the ramps um uh, issue being uh to, well two things one once you get into that sand you kind of have one shot at doing it before you get into the soft underneath. And then if you get into the soft underneath, you can't just pack powder on top of it because it's, it's going to screw up your trajectory. So you got one shot at it. And I thought, I thought we were close enough. I knew we weren't perfect, but again, thought the car would be able to take it. Um, but it just, yeah, it just had a little too much of a lip at the top of it and, and a bit of, so, uh, moving forward, we've got, I've got a different program this year for how we're going to build these jumps. And it'll take that kind of uh, work, or I don't know that 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 wild the variation out of it. Out of it. Exactly, exactly. It'll take the variation out of it, and then um, we should be landing all, on all fours more. Anyway, I'm not going to say all the time because what right. would that be? But. So I think everybody's. Uh, I think everybody wants to know when you when you go off the lip of that jump. What's the first thing in your head? <laughs> is it one word <laughs> or is it a whole bunch of stuff? You mean like when it's going bad or when it's going good? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes to both. Yes. Um, well, the, 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 at, uh, at, at Utah, the second I left that jump, I knew we were hooped. Um, I, can, I could just feel it in the back of the car. Like it instantly started going over too too fast. Obviously, why I, you know hammered the throttle instantly, but it just wasn't enough. Um, and yeah, I actually. I actually said in my helmet, you've got to be kidding me. Um, Cause I, I couldn't believe how fast we were going over. And then it was like, Holy shit. I was like, we're actually, I think I might land on the roof here. Cause it always right. feels like you're, you're worse off in the car. Right. And so I was kind of, it's funny what you think about, but I was kind of thinking about like, you know, the next four months with broken car bones. And I was like, all right, I guess, you know, it's not going to be that bad. You know, I guess we'll just, we'll kind of, like I'd already had the, I already had the program at home figured out. <laughs> you were around. making phone calls in your head. So it was like a testament <laughs> yeah, to how long like, you were right, in the air. You know, we'll, we'll do this and we'll do that. And I'm just not going to be able to lift the, you know, this. And, and then we landed and I was like, the first hit was, uh, 
the first hit was pretty hard, you know, it was like, it was like, Whoa, you know, and then the second hit, that was what like actually got me a bit. Right. I was like, holy shit. Like it, 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 that second hit was so hard and uh, it just the way it hit. And I was just like, wow, you know, that one actually like took me, took a little bit of the wind out of me. And then, you know, the rest of the tumble was just, it was nothing. It was just like, you know, riding in a, in a big air, air trampoline. So, so I um, think that uh, you couldn't have landed in that situation, I don't think you could have landed at a better angle because you kind of you kind of had the front end starting to go upside down, and that kind of just rolled you instead of just doing a straight lawn dart. Um, yeah, so yeah, sort of say. I mean, we it, it was for what it was. It, it is, again, it could have gone a whole lot worse. So you're right. For what it was, it went well. Um, but again, I'm always moving forward and, and actually because of that crash, um, I'm actually changing the design a little bit on the car, um, on the front end, back end, just for, um, uh, you learn something new every force, time. force transferring. Let's, let, 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 let's call it that, but it's, uh, just to try to, cause I mean, it's, it, it's a very real thing that, you know, jumps aren't always going to go well, whether it's because of the jump or just because of hell, human error. Sometimes hell could have a failure on the car. You never know. Um, I mean, I, I remember just off topic, but I remember, I remember one, one, one time back in when I was doing a record jump um, for the overall distance back in 2017, I remember I blew a belt at 80 miles an hour <laughs> with two, with two wheels already on the ramp. Wow. Um, man. Like, that is the worst <laughs> case scenario. Right. And luckily, luckily, be, just before I got to the ramp, I, I kind of felt something and I was like, holy shit, you know, something's up. And I veered off the ramp, literally almost killed 13 people that were sitting beside it because they were in the way, hit the side of the trailer, like just carnage. <laughs> and, and so that's, it was from that, well, not just that time on, but, you know, it's events like that that make you kind of, prepare for try to prepare for anything because you never know what you could have you could have a jump so dialed in that you could do it with your eyes closed and something could happen i know there's no shortage of people on instagram and youtube that uh, owe you royalties for putting out all of your content <laughs> and your achievements yeah. and getting all these views and engagements it was i, I was rad uh, a bunch of the people posted this year um their top what was it their top nine or their top 10 of, of 20, um, 2020. And I, I always chuckle when I'm, I'm more than one of and sometimes <laughs> more than three on, on all these people's feeds of what the, the, the feeds that got the most hits. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. So just a testament to what you're saying about re-engineering, redesigning, kind of reapproaching every single time you, you have an experience, uh, we'll call it an experience. Um, the I like that. I the, like that. <laughs> the the chassis and the the vehicle itself. Speaking like you were saying, a testament to the product. Um, really didn't have much damage to it. So your your car basically uh, it, it blew a tie rod, I think, in the front, and then a and a, a something in the back, a radius rod. Um, I, I what happened was a bolt sheared off in the front um, that then caused the lower a arm to fold back. And then the, the front kind of went with it on one corner. Um, I bent a radius rod in the back. Um, one of the shocks uh, uh, eyelet broke off and went through the tire. Just all minor stuff. Uh, the rad got squished, but I mean, it is what it is. Like, you know, something, something better get squished if you're going down that road. I, I, wouldn't, sure. I wouldn't even want to be able just to drive away normally after that kind of a crash. So, um, yeah, all, all in all, everything... Everything fared very well. Um, HCR uh, came on board last year to help us out with the Pro. They're also going to come on this year, and, and just we're redesigning a little bit of the front end of Medusa as well. Um, definitely stoked to have those guys on board. They make a you know solid product that we've already tested and and know is know is correct. Um, yeah, man, just onwards and upwards is always. I'm, I'm always I'm always doing something. Um, You'll never, you'll never see a crash and then see the car the same way after a crash. You know, it's always gonna, it's always gonna be improved in, in some aspect. I think that uh, it's important to say that all this, it leads up to the idea that there's years of experience, there's tons of money and engineering that goes into these things, and if you feel like you can take your stock OEM car and go compete with Captain Cajones here, 
um, you're, you got a different thing coming. This is not, you shouldn't take your OEM car and huck it, you know, a hundred feet at, at swing set just to, to keep up and be, and keep the, the popularity up on Instagram, right? This is, this is serious stuff and, and we're not, you know, taking any of this lightly. We, we chuckle and make jokes about stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, the idea that you only broke a few little consumable parts on your car off a major jump like this in a wreck, um, is a testament to the amount of effort that goes into building a safe car and the, and investment into the, the high quality products. So, um, you know, the, the consumer out there, the community around it, you know, we always want to one up each other and be the guy that did the biggest or the fastest or the whatever. Uh, but you know, there's a certain fine line where you gotta, you gotta take your future into consideration here. And if you're not going to put in the years and hard work that, that Al's done on his car, um, maybe you should just go for a joy ride that day and not, uh, <laughs> not send it to the moon. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, and then you, you, you hit it, you hit it, you're hitting the nail on the head there too. Um, and I mean, I've had people that, you know, always ask me these things and, and ask about jumping and, and like, there's not one jump out there ever that's worth your, your health, you know, like, like never. And, and whether it's a back, whether it's a, a whatever, I mean, it's, it's, it, people have to play it safe. They have to realize that not only is safety equipment and even, vehicle design as important as it is when you're getting to that level of competition or jumping or whatever you want to call it. Um, but your, your safety gear, I mean, Jesus, I, I, a bunch of these guys hitting these things. I, I did not even wearing like Hans devices and stuff like that. It's just like, Oh my God. Like, I mean, Simpson has always taken care of me very well. And I mean, that, uh, last jump was an absolute testament to their products as well. I mean, we didn't, we didn't move. Uh, my head didn't move. My neck didn't get sore. Nothing, you know. Like we had some bruising from a seatbelt, but something's got it. Something's got a bruise, right? So, um, yeah. Pe- people just that, that would be my that would be my uh, words of wisdom, I guess, so to say, is just play it safe. And and if you're gonna if you're gonna go and and do something huge, make sure you got the proper equipment to to do it with. And that that includes shocks. I mean, For sure. I, it's crazy to see how many guys. I'll, I'll bring that swing set jump up. Um, how many guys are out there hitting it with stock shocks? Like I mean, you're stock cages you're, know, too. Yeah, like people just don't understand what that what, what that's doing to their backs when you ground out like that. Like it's just that's that's permanent damage. You know, I mean, that's all not it has going to do, away. if it goes even just the slightest degree wrong, you might not be going home. You know, I that, not that's, one piece. Yeah, that's the thing that makes me nervous about. I mean, I I I, I think we're gonna see as the future goes on, we're gonna see more and more people inspired by what you're doing trying to chase some of that stuff and I, I hope that they they understand that if it, it you're you're playing with fire that's for sure and it's like not the, even what he's doing it's what each other are one up each other I mean they're just willing to send it for no reason other than Instagram glory right something and yeah. uh, you know I saw a guy you know huck his his oh, he took a, a, a pro razor straight from the dealership to swing set and hucked it over a hundred feet and it was like that for one could have been a huge waste of money <laughs> in my opinion, <laughs> but, but two, you know, who knows what could have happened there and who he's inspiring to do the same thing that isn't prepared for it. You know, like he could have went into that with the idea that I'm, I'm all set up. I'm safe. You know, I don't care if I blow the shocks out cause I'm replacing them tomorrow anyways. Like he could have had a completely different mindset and experience level than the next person that just saw him do that thing and says, Oh, that means I can do it. Right. And so we have to have a reality check a little bit in our community. I think we we tend to um, just assume that we're going to be OK if we wreck like it. Eh, it's just money. But it's also you, your your health, your ability to walk, your ability to have a hand that doesn't have missing limp digits on it. Right. Like we got to have a, a reality check in some of our in our circles, because in the end, we're just going to start having some bad days that that affect a lot of people. Yeah, no, I mean, it's true. And, and I really, I try and I, I try and push the safety thing as much as I can, I, you know, without sounding like a total broken record, but um, it is, it is so important. And especially for, especially for the younger guys, you know, the, the, the kids that are coming out and, and maybe haven't thought through. I mean, I remember being that age on a dirt bike, you know, different, but um, still the same. And like, you know, you'd have someone tell you, oh, you know, don't do that. You'd go and do it anyway. And you just ragged all and some of us would get lucky and some of us wouldn't you know like it's uh it's uh i was the right doll. 
life's long. <laughs> <laughs> life's long. You don't want to be limping around or, or worse for the rest of it, you know? So uh, looking forward into 2021, um, you know, obviously, uh, I came on board to help uh, take over, do um, an even better job this year on media and and covering some of these events and whatnot. Um, and so we have uh, takeover to look forward to. I'm assuming you're looking forward to uh, once again participating in the Huck Fest and racing events and all that stuff. Um, so, so what are you looking forward to in 2021? What do you got on the schedule that looks interesting and fun? And and what can we look forward to as fans of yours to follow you around the world? Um, so 2021, I mean, we're, we're already, we're already deep into her. Um, it's going to be track season here real soon up here. All the, all the big mountains are, are pretty covered up now. So it's time to, it's time to get up high and, uh, we'll be doing some filming for that. Um, we'll be seeing what limits we can push on the, with the track car and uh if we can maybe get these things flying a little bit i'll just i'll leave that there the, the last time i saw um, you flying on tracks you uh you kind of got stuck out in the uh, middle of nowhere <laughs> yeah yeah no definitely have a stat phone on call when we when we do do it um other than that uh we've got some actually it looks like that we got a 150 mile race coming up here in in uh up in uh, alberta canada uh, i think i'm going to be attending that that's kind of a midsummer thing but uh really uh concentrating on the utv takeovers this year um i think that um the, the car will be ready for like a you know legit ride-alongs this year for people so i'm gonna once that once that gets happening um we're gonna go and uh kind of have a track laid out that people can jump in the car um, at the events and, and come for hopefully the ride of their lives. On that uh, Alberta event, you know, if you could put a call into Trudeau and get us up on, up there, that would be sick. Sure. <laughs> Just, Touchy subject. <laughs> we we don't yeah, want to get put, no. take it down. We got to be careful what we say. <laughs> uh, oh man, yeah, no, I I hear you, man. It's just watching watching some things going on in the world right now are just maddening to me. Um, what's happening? But uh, it's just, starting uh, yeah. to come down a little bit. You know, I saw something on CNN today. We're in New York and New Jersey. They're starting to let fans attend uh, hockey games and basketball games again. So it. You know, it's not going to be a speedy process by by any stretch of the imagination. But what I'm hoping for is that the outdoor events like Camp RZR take over pretty much go off uh, without any, you know, I mean, obviously there's going to be some regulation and stuff like that. But I just want to see the schedule, especially the outdoor schedule, come back online. Totally. Yeah, no, th- fingers crossed. Absolutely. Um, I'm sure we're going to. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we're going to still have a good year, you know? Um, and, um, yeah, I guess just the, the, that's exactly it. Fingers crossed for, we kind of get things back in business here sooner than later. For sure. <laughs> Cause I know there's a lot, I know there's a lot of people up here that are starting to go a little crazy because they need some sand in their blood again. So, yeah. Well, I was pissed you weren't in Oregon. That sucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, a, yeah, that no, was a great I, event considering all, all things considering. I hear you, man. I hear you. When I, when I got to the border and realized all the quarantine crap was going on, I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. So yeah. Yeah. It was, it was super unfortunate. Yeah. We, we need this border to open up so we can go up North with you guys and, and hang out with you for a couple of days and film some of the fun stuff that goes on up there. Dude, I posted up something a couple of days ago on Facebook. It's basically these monster trucks out snow wheeling and, <laughs> right. and Al, Al reacted to the post those the Al, those people are your neighbors. Like I think they I think they live in hope. And it's like all these dudes are doing is just taking these like anything from a Ford Ranger to a Jeep, putting like fifty three inch, fifty five inch <laughs> tires on it and just go oh, yeah, just yeah. go raging up in deep snow. It looks amazing. Yeah, in fact, I think I do know that. I think I do. I, I know a crew at least that's got some pretty wild, wild machines out here. And, and yeah, they uh, they like the snow. They like they like it. So um, that's that is the beauty of this place. I mean, just it, it is the kind of the land of opportunity for riding around here. I mean, we have everything under the sun other than sand dunes that you know a guy can ride to, and it's it's uh, there's not a whole lot of regulations up here. Knock on wood. So you know the uh, yeah, funny thing, definitely a rad place to be. Oh yeah, the funny thing is about that video. I showed it to my daughter, and I was going, "Well, I found our next hobby," and she just goes, "That looks insanely expensive." 
And I'm like, you know what I do for a living, right? <laughs> it's like, it's like I, I guarantee you it's not as bad as UTV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. totally. So, so uh, we have the, uh, you have some racing to do. You have some uh, takeover events to do. Anything else you got going on in, the, uh, in your neck of the woods? Um, we will have, uh, again, we're, a couple things are kind of up in the air just due to restrictions, so to say. I mean, there's a couple of really good poker poker rallies that we have annually up here um, that I know the guys are just kind of, you know, uh, not not uh, giving it 100% just yet because they're not sure about the regulation part of it. Um, but there's there's always, uh, there's literally a handful of those that go on, you know, up up, uh, up here annually. Um, hundreds of people show up, really good time. Um, that's where some of the camel girls that you've seen me with come from. <laughs> um, so we'll be, yeah, we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll be getting out and doing, doing a bunch of that as well. Um, I've also got another, um, a property that's, come to my attention uh, and i was just doing a little bit of testing there last year um it's got some huge huge potential it's twelve thousand acres um wow. of just beautiful beautiful rolling hills and all that so um we'll be out there doing some filming that you know you 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 won't be uh you won't be missing that put it that way is that bc or to the east that's bc yeah nice it's actually only three three hours from my house so wow. it's, it's it's close and uh yeah, I got a got a buddy up there with a with a super super nice property, and um, he's game, man. He's 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 game for whatever. So uh, we've already scoped it. We've got some crazy ideas. Uh, it's just about you know getting up there and uh, making making things happen. Well, I I got something for you. I, I don't I don't have a bucket list, but if I did, I would say the number one ride would be the Mackenzie Grease Trail. Do you know that trail? I do not. So it's about an hour to an, a little over an hour, and I th- it might even be a couple hours north of Kelowna, and it goes to the coast. And it's been done a number of times in Toyotas and Jeeps, never been done on a UTV. And you, uh, I- I'm thinking you probably want to run like 35s on it because there are some pretty aggressive water crossings. But it's gnarly, it's long, fuels at a minimum, it, it's just right up my alley. Uh, the more research I do on it, the more I know that I got to try and make it happen if uh, really if and, we, and that's and that's from that's from Kelowna yeah uh, it's north of the it's north of Kelowna um if I pulled it up it's uh it's it's a trail that I think dates back to the 1800s and uh, an outfit out of Bozeman Montana called uh, Expedition Overland tackled it within the last five to six years um and I, it's just been an obsession ever since you know it took them days to get through there to saw up all the all the uh the the wood that it, basically the trees that have fallen over the trail they oh, run, the fall, you know, yeah. oh yeah and i mean they're all out there in forerunners and land cruisers and having to stop and really slow down for stuff that's not going to hold a utv up you know so i i really think that it's something i the, the sketchiest thing about it seemed like it would be the water crossings it seems like things could go badly <laughs> in a hurry huh. so you know with no weight but when i looked at it it's so gorgeous and just so remote that just like right right up my alley. I really want to try and pull it off over the next five to ten years. Well, let's um let's keep in touch on that. Yeah. That, I mean I obviously I know the area well. That's my backyard. So I would uh yeah, I'd be definitely uh I'd be definitely interested in something like that. And um yeah, I, I could I could I could definitely make something like that work. Um another with that being said, something else that we found this this year and will be doing we found a thousand kilometer, not mile, but a thousand kilometer ride that goes right around Vancouver Island. Oh my gosh. That that just seems epic. Just the sentence. I I, <laughs> I yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. I mean Yeah. So that's we're we're gonna obviously wait till a little bit better better weather because we're probably gonna be, you know, sleeping under the stars, so to say, on some spots. Dude, but um yeah, there's no other way something's yeah. gonna happen. Dude, one of my oldest memories in my entire life was was going over on the Coho from Port Angeles to uh, to Victoria. Yeah, I just I, that that island is is very very special to me. I, I would kill to go on a trip like that. Well, we're gonna have to get you some scuba gear then. If these borders, borders don't open up, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Just a, you just, just let me borrow a Medusa. Snor- snorkel on the pro, and uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll fly we'll over. Have to do a fully enclosed uh, submarine cab. Oh, I'm sure a couple of giant loop bags will be able to ratchet strap down to the roof of Medusa. No problem. 
A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. So yeah, yeah, no, that, that's cool, man. And then, yeah, it's good. You brought that up because it reminded me of that other one too. Yeah. I couldn't even begin to tell you how many times in my life I've said, I wonder if there's good wheeling on Vancouver Island. I've been to Vancouver Island probably 10 times in the last couple of years. And every time I'm there, I'm just like, dude, I do not want to go home. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's insane. <laughs> Yeah, it's more and more of it. Uh, more and more of it's been popping up here. Uh, it's funny how social media works because things just pop up on your feed that you've been talking about the day before, you know, with your phone in your pocket. But funny um, how that works. <laughs> it, yeah, but uh, yeah, I've had a couple rides. There's another big one up by a uh, Golden. Um, that, that another trail that I'll have to I'll have to Google again of what it was. But it was another just beautiful, you know, big alpine ride that takes a, a good a good amount of time. So uh, it looks like we have quite a quite a fun f- year full of events to have uh, everything go off on. And uh, last year, you know, there was a lot of great memories. I think this year is going to have even more, and we're going to try to document as much of that as possible, uh, so that everyone else that's not there can see how much they're missing. Um, and uh, you know, if we can do some of those ride-alongs uh, on your car with uh, with the the man himself behind it, I think there's going to be some people that. Um, can check uh check off their bucket lists uh <laughs> for for the time being so um hey uh thanks for coming on the show this uh today and uh we look forward to seeing you this year come across the border and and partake in what uh the trail rides we have down here and things like that i think it would be an awesome opportunity to get you out and enjoy some of the beauty we have down here to offer that definitely definitely sounds like a good time and um let's uh, keep an eye on these borders to see if you guys get up for one of those other two rides that i was talking about heck yeah all right well you can where can we find you online if someone's not uh, familiar with uh, who you are, which I'm pretty sure they just crawl out of a hole in the ground if they aren't. But uh, if they if they don't know where to find you, uh, where can they find you online and follow all your antics? Um, Al Macbeth 357 on Instagram, Al Macbeth on Facebook, and uh, Al Macbeth on YouTube uh, or Concept Distributing on YouTube or Facebook or uh, Instagram. So all, all, sir, all kind of my, my feeds and uh, yeah, um, uh, always like to thank everyone for, in, for coming along for the ride. And hopefully this ride doesn't end anytime soon. And, and to you guys, thanks a lot for having me on the show. And, um, we will definitely chat soon. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, all the things. And the, uh, what am I going to say, Ian? The ticker talkers. I don't do that. Oh, do you know what that is? It's, it's Chinese. Oh, I don't do that. Oh, we've discussed this. <laughs> And, oh uh, yeah, there you go, there you go. I think I'm on TikTok too. What? <laughs> I, I, I think. I think he just said you're old, and he's not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so follow us online. You can follow us on all the podcasts, uh, Spotify, Google, uh, and if you are on iTunes, uh, feel free to give us a review and a star, and and see uh, if we can't make this thing into something bigger. Um, also, I am playing around with the idea of launching a newsletter for uh, those that like getting kind of the behind the scenes and updates and stuff. So if you go to our website right now, sidebysideguys.com, you can uh, sign up for that. And uh, until the next one, guys, peace. Oh,